Now let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Batteries. I bought a plow for my truck. Yeah. We'll Put see. Back for but I'm clearing the rodents first. Well, thanks everyone for coming tonight. Kicking off our regular meeting of the Denali Borough Assembly. Um, we don't have anything on the public hearing agenda, so we'll go right into uh, the regular meeting. Um, if anybody that is listening in on the internet wants to, to contact us, you can email us at publiccomment at denaliborough.com or give us a call at 683-1332. Or you can um, find the link to this meeting on the website and join in on the, the Zoom meeting if you want to uh, talk to us in person. Uh, but we'll do public comments here in a little bit and again at the end of the meeting. But um, if people want to reach out and communicate with us uh, during the meeting, um, we can suspend the rules and, and take comments as things come up on the agenda. So please don't hesitate to to give us your input here tonight. But to uh, call the meeting to order, I would ask Mayor Walker to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, gladly. I pledge allegiance to the flag on the screen. Oh, and up here. Oh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor Walker. And I would ask uh, our clerk to call the roll, please. Dominic Canale? Here. Joe Chapel? Here. Colin Shreve? Here. Here. Lisa Miner? David Alexander? Here. Mark Johnson, Chris is the phone. Jeff Stanger, yes. Jared Zimmerman, here. We did hear from Mr. Johnson, Ms. Miner, and Ms. Sapone that they would not be able to make it today. Yeah. Let's make a motion that we excuse them from tonight's meeting. Is there a second? Uh, second. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Stenger moved to accept <clears throat> members, been seconded. Any discussion? Anyone opposed to uh, excusing the absent folks? Okay, hearing none, we'll call that unanimous. And that'll bring us to public comments. Have we had any public comment communication? Leading up I to the meeting, not. I did hear my phone ringing um, when uh, I was doing roll there. Okay. So um, I'll go forward my phone to my cell phone <laughs> and okay. see if they will call back. Um, but I don't have any emails right now. We haven't received anything today. Um, I do see mm -hmm. Representative Kevin McCabe on the Zoom call. Okay. Do you something to say? Okay. Hello, everybody. Representative Kevin McCabe. I um, just uh, thought uh, since Denali uh, Borough is going to be in District 30 and I'm running for representative for District 30, I probably ought to check in with you guys and see how things were done. So we've been, uh, Mike Shower and myself have been going to several of the community councils, Houston Community Council and others, and uh, assembly meetings, of course. And uh, I'm familiar with some of you because you visited my office in the last uh, last session, um, but I wanted to check in and say hi. It's a I appreciate you having Zoom. It's a long drive for me to get up there and att attend in person. So if you'll indulge me in doing Zoom uh, call, um, I'll appreciate it. Thanks for joining us uh, tonight. Absolutely. Well, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if, uh, I think you probably got them at, at our last meeting, but we did have uh, legislative priorities. Um, 
that we that we shared with folks uh, when we send our our team down to Juneau. Um, <coughs> but um, I'd be curious if you just want want to share any kind of priorities that that you have or um, that you would, yeah, that you kind of want to, to share with folks up here. We do have some some folks that that listen in. I'm sure. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So uh, my philosophy as a representative is your priorities are my priorities as constituents. So I'm happy to bring those forward. Uh, I'm in District 8 currently. And of course, roads are a big priority. Big Lake Road is horrible. Um, I've driven the parks now four times in the last two months. And the parks is, uh, need, need some work. I've already told the DOT that uh, that I'll be uh, talking to them about more than just Big Lake Road if I should get reelected. And uh, they were, um, I, I, I would hate to say that they were happy about that, but um, they uh, at least understood where I was coming from. So uh, another thing that uh, concerns my constituents in the Big Lake area uh, that I've been talking to, as well as we, we've been up to Healy and we went all the way up to Clear Lake Lodge and had an event up there. So um, election uh, integrity is is almost surpassing the PFD right now as a major concern for folks, and I don't necessarily disagree with them. If you don't, if we don't have our vote, and if we don't have a assurance that our vote is uh, at the top of the government's list, then we really don't have a country uh, or a state. So um, I'm focused on that. Senator Shower is also focused on that. Uh, Rank choice voting, in our opinion, is a problem. And we would like to see it gone. So the most of the Republicans in the legislature uh, currently are campaigning on that. That they would like to uh, uh, like to remove it from uh, from the statute. We can't do that till February seventeenth because it was a citizens' initiative. But it's a problem. It's been a problem. It was a problem in the primary. People don't understand it. It's complicated. Um, the other big issue that I hear all the time from my constituents is the Constitutional Convention. I was not a big fan of that for a long time, but uh, I have noticed that there is now $2.9 million of outside the state money lined up against it, which tells me that maybe we ought to have it. Uh, you know, you, you, will, you will know the issue by the enemies of it, right? So um, uh, there are... Uh, Mike Shower and I have been looking into it very uh, deeply, and uh, just for your consideration, you get, as a citizen, you get three votes on this. You get to vote for the Constitutional Convention, you get to vote for the delegate, and then you get to vote for their product. So the citizens actually have the ultimate say in this, even if there should be some folks that get on there that, um, on the, on the, uh, as a delegate, if they get on there and try to put in some sort of wacko amendment that we don't agree with, right or left, you get to vote on it. So um, that is, uh, I think, the third thing that my constituents here in the district in Houston and, and in the north end of the valley are very concerned about. Uh, one of the other big issues in Willow and Houston, anyways, are is flooding. Uh, I suspect you all are a little bit too far north to experience much of that, but. Uh, uh, that's another thing that we are working on. So um, I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, you can email me at um, Kevin at KevinJMcCabe.com. You can call me. My cell phone number is 907-229-3721. Or you can call my legislative office. And forgive me, but I don't know the number for that, but it's on the state website. I never call there. So um but my cell phone number reaches me 24 seven. I'm happy to answer any questions. And uh, I am hoping to be the representative for district 30, despite the fact that it's three times the size of district eight, I, I might have to invest in an electric vehicle and take part of the, in the charging station there in Canwell to, to get all the way to the North. So anyways, I, I appreciate the questions. If you guys have any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer them. Anything for uh, Representative McCabe? Yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining us. All right. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, and I, if you don't mind, I'll just hang around and uh, see how you do business and see what's on your minds. That'd be great.
And if we don't have any other <clears throat> public comments, um, we'll go on to approving our agenda for tonight. Make a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Stanger to approve, and it's been seconded. Any discussion or changes to the agenda? Anyone opposed to approving the agenda as it sits in front of us? Hearing none, we'll call that unanimous. And we'll go on to uh, approving the minutes of the September 14th regular meeting. I move to approve the minutes of previous meeting of September 14th, 2022. I'll second. Okay, moved by Mr. Canale to approve the minutes and it's been seconded. Any discussion, changes, or amendments to the minutes? Anyone opposed to approving the minutes? Hearing none, call that unanimous. And we'll move on to a partner report. And we have a, a Trooper uh, Miner with us here tonight um, for a partner report. Thanks for joining us. Yep, um, I was uh, invited by Mayor Walker to come give a report, and I'd like to do this periodically um, as much as the Assembly wants us uh, to kind of update you on what the state troopers are looking at. First off, I apologize. I'm not in uniform and I'm not there tonight. We just got done testing uh, or qualifying with brand new weapon systems today um, as technology evolves. The troopers are trying to keep up with that. And so now uh, all of the troopers are outfitted with brand new guns and brand new uh, red dot sites and, and all sorts of fun stuff. So um, that's why I'm not in uniform and not there tonight. Um, I wanted to let you guys know just a little bit when I uh, was transferred here to Healy to supervise all the troopers up and down the Parks Highway. That includes the Denali Borough, a Porsche, uh, Nanana. It also includes a portion of the Fairbanks North Star Borough, a small portion, and then a portion of the Matsu Borough as well. Um, the biggest problem five years ago was the fatality crashes along the highway. In 2017, we had 12 fatalities in a 180 mile stretch of highway. And then in 2018, we had 18 fatalities in a 180 mile stretch of highway that year. So we, that for that year, we had a death for every 10 miles of highway, essentially, uh, along the parks highway. So our command staff had made that a top priority. Some of you may have noticed, but the troopers have been uh, aggressively enforcing traffic um, uh, doing aggressive traffic enforcement uh, for, for the last four or five years. Um, we, there's no secret about it. We write a lot of tickets. We make a lot of traffic stops. Um, but the numbers don't lie. And working with DOT, um, DOT actually put in a few uh, extra passing lanes further south of Cantwell. Um, they've also been uh, very prompt to respond when we call them in the middle of the night and say, hey, this corner is really bad. We need a sand truck out here. We need a plow truck out here. They've been very accommodating at yeah, keeping the highway safer. Um, in 2019, so just remember those other numbers, 2017 was 12 fatalities, 2018 was 18 fatalities. In 2019, the fatality crashes dropped to zero. Um, in 2020, obviously there's the COVID-19, less people were traveling, but uh, we had one fatality in 2020. In 2021, we had zero. And 2022, so far this year, knock on wood, we have zero. So the numbers don't lie. The, our focus is not going to necessarily be shifting away from the traffic. We're going to keep uh, aggressively enforcing traffic laws because we think that makes a huge difference. Um, but we have seen that the burglaries and property crimes have started to increase. Statewide, they've decreased. Um, but especially in the Denali borough, and then to include um, Nanana, which I know is outside the Nanali borough, but that's a, a major portion of the area that the troopers that I supervise uh, patrol. Um, we've had a significant increase in burglaries and thefts. So um, we reached out the city of Nanana, the city of Anderson and the Denali borough have all provided their, their assistance. And uh, we won't go into real 
detail, too much detail. I'll let uh, Mayor Walker go into further detail if he wants to, but um, uh, the borough has provided us with some equipment uh, to help us try and cut down on some of those property crimes as well as deter some of those property crimes. So they assisted in purchasing us some equipment. Um, if you remember a few years ago, we did a bait, uh, a bait trailer operation where we set a trailer out uh, in a pullout and we had it uh, GPS tracked and uh, as well as a number of other systems in place. And uh, I, I had it in the Denali borough for about two weeks and it didn't get stolen. So that was a good sign. I took it up to Nanana and I got stolen within a couple of days. Um, and then we ended up making a, a good case off of that. Um, so some of those, that equipment will go towards additional operations like that. It'll also help uh, some residents who can't afford some security um, cameras and stuff like that, where we can deploy them specifically to hot spots where we've seen an, an increase in burglaries and thefts. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to encourage the borough and all the borough residents to consider is as technology increases, the cost of the technology has decreased significantly. Most of our property crimes, if it does not have uh, a tracker on it, if it does not have video or game camera footage, most of those property crimes are not being solved. Um, there's, a, you know, we don't endorse a particular company or anything like that, but I'm sure you are aware of companies like Ring and Arlo, and I'm sure there's lots of different companies that offer um, easy webcams, you know, security cameras that you can set up at home. And we encourage residents to please consider, if you haven't already, looking into those. Uh, a few years ago in Cantwell, there were six, I think it was six burglaries from uh, cabins that were all burglarized in a short period of time and fortunately one of the residents had some game cameras up uh, one of the photos from one of the game cameras a couple of the game cameras were spotted by the thieves and actually stolen but one of the game cameras was not spotted and got us a, a, a picture good enough that we were able to identify the suspects <clears throat> they lived in anchorage and long story short a swat team went and uh, and hit their house with a search warrant and they were able to solve over 25 burglaries and thefts all the way from Homer up to Fairbanks. Based off of that one photo that finally gave us enough to figure out who the suspects were. So I encourage residents, you can buy game cameras nowadays for 50 bucks on Amazon um, or go to Sportsman's Warehouse. They have similar ones. They have cell phone enabled ones that'll text you a photo. Um, the Ring or Arlo camera systems, those can... I can't stress how much that those change our job and make our job um, possible to, to identify suspects and, and actually prosecute them. We have had a few cases where families have been, uh, you know, at sports events or out of town and they get the ring alert on their phone and they send it to me and I send a trooper out. We're able to catch people out on the highway. The good thing is, here on the parks highway they unless they're local they can only go north or south and i have troopers in both directions so if we have a suspect we can usually catch them um let me just look at my notes here and see if there was anything else i wanted to cover for you guys and then open uh, see if you had any questions we are going to be doing and and this is not a secret i think it's important to put this out here there we are going to be doing some more bait uh operations uh they may involve things like uh for an example, um, we put trackers in uh, chainsaws and we leave them in the back of a pickup truck at a, at a store and uh, see how long it takes for somebody to steal it. Um, same thing with like the bait trailer. We're, we're going to continue those operations and keep the pressure on to keep the thieves um, running for the hills. So does the assembly have any, any questions for, as far as our priorities or, or anything uh, we can do to help uh, the assembly? I'm encouraged to hear the what you said about the hitting the burglaries and the uh, the thefts. That's what we need. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Also, uh, it would be good to hear from from you uh, periodically, quarterly, or some kind of regular schedule. That would be great. Yeah. 
to support that. I can be here as often as you want or as seldom as you want. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, Trooper Miner, for, for joining us here tonight. And uh, th thanks, Mayor Walker, for extending that invitation. <clears throat> and thanks for uh, you and your team's work, keeping us safe. I don't see anyone else on the call for a partner report. Okay. And not a planning commission report the this evening right okay i'm gonna anything. include some of that in my okay um, report. mayor's report so we'll move on to the uh school district report and thank you superintendent polta for joining us well, it's a pleasure to be here i think a fairly short report probably because my first congratulation actually is goes to my brother kyle he got married a couple weeks ago so <laughs> back to minnesota and uh was able to to be a part of that wedding so really happy for for him and his wife Paige. Other more local congratulations, though, I want to give a credit congratulations to Taylor Eddington. She won the state cross country meet. Oh. And this day, today, there was a little parade for her at the end of school. Oh. So one of the fire trucks and one of the trooper cars came up, um, scared the life out of me because I actually didn't know what was happening. I hear the siren getting louder and louder. And I'm like starting to go, like, what's going on? You know, I don't see alarms going off. Uh oh. And then everybody else goes, no, no, it's the parade. <laughs> so I calmed down and was able to go out and uh, kind of join the applause for Taylor. So I happy to do that. Also, just want to say thank you to really a lot of people in our community, both staff members and volunteers. We've helped, hosted a couple tournaments this fall. We hosted a soccer tournament and then a middle school basketball tournament. I really just appreciate all that help and support to, to pull off that event and to be great and generous hosts that, you know, are the type of, we really represent and show the rest of the state, the type of community that we are. And it's great when we go places to receive that hospitality and kind and just hear people talk about the great treatment they got when they were at. I also wanna congratulate uh, our music teacher, Candace Mudge. She, along with her husband, the music teacher, Nina Darren Mudge, were nominated as the uh, music educator of the year for the state of Alaska. So congratulations to them on that. I, I don't know when the, fin the final, final decision will be announced on that, but wishing that that duet the best of luck. A couple notes, uh, just one aspect on, on in-service. I like to mention it because on uh, this Monday, October 10th, Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day was actually a work day for school staff. And so we did an in-service and we scheduled that on some of those big holidays um, so that our families that do receive that holiday off are able to spend that with their, their kids. Um, during that day, teachers spent a lot of time really digging into um, a process and their procedure on designing inquiry questions in their classrooms. So really asking themselves and trying to do it in just a simple, systematic way. What's a, a change or difference I'm going to do in my teaching structure? And what change in student achievement am I going to watch in a short period of time to see kind of what effect I have? And so they'll take a big question and try to then just kind of piece it down into a small thing that maybe I'm going to do like this month. So it might be a question about, um, I really want to increase student engagement. And then they might do something like, hey, if I start every day with, uh, make sure there's a little bit of physical activity in class every day, will that increase student engagement? So they're going to do something related to that for a period of time and collect some basic data. Maybe it's just asking students, yeah, do you feel more involved? Are you more excited to be in class? Something so that at the end of the month, we can sit with other teachers, look at that data, see that change that's driving that big picture change they look at, and kind of inspire them to just kind of see the, how those small changes can really build up to the differences and help people kind of just see the progress that they can make with students. Switching to uh, some financial information, we did receive our draft report on our FY22 audit. There are no surprises in that. The draft report just allows Rena, a business manager, to kind of go through and look for technical errors. Um, we expect to get the final draft or the final report within the next month. So everything's on track for that, which is important for us. It's important for the borough mm -hmm. for your audit as well. For our current budget, our FY23 budget, uh, we're currently in our 20-day count period, the period of 20 days that the state actually counts direct enrollment at schools and uses that to determine our funding levels for this school year. 
And with our brick and mortar schools, we are seeing a below budgeted enrollment. That's consistent with what we've seen since the start of year. Um, I think last month when I reported to you, I talked about Denali Peak and we were on track to uh, hit eight, eight, 800 students in our budget. The Anchorage School District really started playing hardball with homeschooling correspondence program students that are not part of the Anchorage School District and really making it difficult for a lot of those students to participate in after school activities. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we've actually dropped enrollment. When I was working at the uh, Anchorage office before going to Minnesota, we had 747 students. <clears throat> we now have 711. So we've had students withdraw. And during that, that week, week and a half, we've also had additional students enrolled. So at this point, we know we're really not going to reach that 800 number. And since we're in the count period, we're going to be much closer to that 700 figure. And that will negatively impact our budget this year. Um, Rena's been out for the last couple of days, so I haven't got a better kind of financial projection. projection. My quick math of it was about a $300,000 shortfall for this year. And that was a uh, very surprising turn of events in a week. You know, I come back from Minnesota and I'm like, oh my God, what happened? Um, and it's unfortunate. I looked into specifics. What Anchorage is doing is legal. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's permissible. I feel it's unfortunate in terms of how they're treating people that live in their community. Um, and it's things that other districts could do as well in terms of the access we must provide to students in correspondence programs, to brick and mortar programs, versus the access that we might choose to provide to those students. Um, and right now they're making choices that are negatively impacting hmm. us. And that's also then unfortunate. I believe when I was here and spoke with you last month, I also talked about those projections to FY24, the next year. And prior to this, we were saying, hey, we're really looking out to FY24 without changes in kind of laws about state funding. We're projecting about a $500,000 deficit, 5% deficit with no changes of our operations, no changes in state funding. So we have potential to add several hundred thousand dollars to um, again, that is not uncommon in the state. We see a lot of articles in the Anchorage paper about the budget deficit that Anchorage is facing, which you start to see why they want to really encourage students in Anchorage to be enrolled in their brick and mortar programs into their correspondence program. If you read the articles in the Fairbanks paper about Fairbanks, they also are projecting a pretty significant deficit for FY20. So we're, we're not alone. That's very common. And again, as we kind of settle into this year and get to this count period, we'll start looking at and working with the board on how do we best position ourselves for FY24, both in terms of our operational aspects and in our advocacy efforts as we move forward. A few facilities updates for you. Um, on the Anderson roof, we are still waiting for the reimbursement from the department for those expenses. Not sure what our time frame is for that. I know sometimes it's back and forth on these final paperwork things. I think Deed has everything, and we're just kind of waiting for them to like release it, release it, um, and I'll update you guys when that is actually released. With the Tri Valley route, we have received our first uh, design milestone. We received our ten percent uh, design work on that route, and that presented us three options. And when we look at that, the option that really best suits our um, interest in repairing uh, that roof, and we look at the current construction estimates for that option, the construction estimates for that repair would be $1.3 million, which when we wrap up with our design expenses is within the design and estimates that we submitted to the department as part of our capital improvement project and application. So we feel like it's, it's, it's going well, and now we'll move to, I think the next milestone will be a 35% design. We did get quotes for replacement of the Anderson carpets. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of wear and tear in the elementary end, partly because it's, it's old, it's old. It was one of those, it was not the fire crews that did anything. It's, it's old and it was damaged from the water intruding uh, through the ceilings for so many years. Uh, total replacement for the elementary wing and the area around the gym where it's really damaged would be a total of 47,000, almost $50,000. 
On the solar array, array that we've installed at Tri-Valley, we're still waiting for the inspection from GVA to be able to turn that on and actually start harvesting some of that power, hoping they do that before the sun goes away yeah. completely. Um, and then another update, local update is just that the semen control panels that regulate our kind of temperature and airflow at Tri-Valley are old, starting to fail. A replacement for those, we did an updated quote, now will be about $110,000. So we're starting to look at that and have a budget for it to take care of that. On a staffing update, we are still awaiting the arrival of our two teachers that we've hired from overseas. They both have been approved by the Department of Labor, Department of State, for their, their main visa approval. They now have interviews scheduled at their respective embassies for like the final, okay, I know who you are, I trust you. We'll put a stamp in your passport. Uh, one is scheduled for an interview on October 15th. The other, I believe, has an interview scheduled on the 26th. So I know she's trying to move that forward. And we're hoping that the first one's gonna be able to arrive on, into Alaska uh, the first week of November. Uh, fingers crossed hoping to get an update from each of them later this week. Kind of a final update. Uh, just want to mention, especially uh, as we're having a bit more uh, of election information with Representative McCabe here, is that Tri-Valley teacher Daryl Frisbee and his students are working on uh, organizing a candidates forum and inviting candidates for U.S. Senate, U.S. Representative, and State Governor to Ely to Tri Valley to participate in a uh, debate conversation forum. Uh, my understanding that a few have confirmed I will be there in person, a few others have confirmed I will be there virtually. Um, I think one or two might have said I can't make it, or with other ones, it's still trying to find that pathway through the uh, um, through the, the campaign to try to get to the candidate or get to the right person, actually get a response. But looking forward to that, uh, Mr. Frisbee and students. <clears throat> similar events in the past. Um, and I believe he's looking to schedule that on October like 24th and 25th. So if you can't kind of pencil that out, uh, good opportunity to, to listen to and maybe ask some questions of our potential representatives, senators, and governors. And with that, I would entertain any questions. Anything for Superintendent Volta? Thank you for the report. Thank you for joining us. That'll bring us to uh, the mayor's report, Mayor yeah. Walker. Thank you. It's good to be with you this evening. And thanks Superintendent Polta for that report. And um, thanks to Sergeant Miner for joining us on the partner report. Um, you know, the troopers are truly partners and we're happy to, um, to be able to support their efforts. Um, the game cameras, are important ways to uh, deter and even to catch uh, thieves out there. And when Sergeant Miner came with, with a low request for what would really be helpful to increase public safety here, uh, Denali Borough was, was pleased to be able to step up and use a little bit of our contingency and, um, and provide um, some of those tools in his, his efforts to to deter and to catch the wrongdoers out there. So thank you, Sergeant Miner and, and your trooper staff. And um, for my report, I will go into my written report. I'll also do a little planning commission report, but I'd like to start by ceding a little time to um, to our community development director, Teresa Floberg, who has, who has a bit of a report for you too. She's in Soldatno right now. There you go. Hi everyone. I'm at the Alaska Recreation and Parks Conference um, this week down in Soldotna. So great to have some time to chat with uh, folks from around the state, um, what they're doing for their communities. And I was hoping Leslie Nope might be here, but you know, such luck for anyone who's a Parks and Rec fan. <laughs> All right, so um, <laughs> a few updates that I have, a couple quick ones. Um, the vaccination clinic was rescheduled. It's now confirmed for Thursday, November 10th. And so that's a partnership with Horizon Medical, the National Park Service, Interior Community Health Center, Tri-Valley Fire Department, and the Division of Public Health, all sending vaccinators um, for that event on the 10th of November. 
Um, another quick update is that um, we're making progress um, working with myself, Boris, and Marsha on um, the street signing, um, go, go bringing that to the next phase um, for actual planning for installation since we have that USDA grant. So uh, Marsha's built um, a portal where we'll start um, going from uh, prioritizing street um, signage based on incorrect names or name replacements or missing signs altogether. Um, and we'll be putting out a contract for that in the coming months to um, for that production installation of street signs for numbering shortly to follow. So that progress is being made on that for the, those two grants that we did get for that. Um, another quick update is that I'm participating in AML's program called Cities of Opportunity. It's a monthly meeting working with um, staff from different municipalities throughout the state on um, looking at local government's role in, um, the, in their communities, um, focusing really on community health. Um, we had a great first session last month in September, the first one focus, focusing on the social determinants of, of health, um, looking at um, evaluating economic development, not in the lens of you know, a balanced budget or attracting businesses, but on the building blocks of community, housing, child care, public health resources. Um, the Department of Health spoke to the needs for the need for a community health needs assessment. So that was encouraging that we're already underway in that process. Um, I'll share the summary of the session in the minutes for anyone who wants to read it um, separately. Um, and I'll offer that just every month as a recap for that Cities of Opportunity and what we're learning um, for our borough. Um, the main update I want to give, and Amber, if you are able to share that document and jumping to page two of it. Um, DOT has a program that has come back into funding. It's on a three-year cycle. It's for the Community Transportation Program and the Transportation Alternatives Program. Again, it's a three-year cycle. In 2019, the Healy Spur Road was awarded through CTP. Um, TAP ha was not um, funded in 2019, so it's been quite a few years since this opened up. And so it's a community transportation program and the transportation alternatives program. It's looking at projects off of the national and Alaska highway system. Um, the CTP is focused on roads and bridges um, off that main highway. And then TAP is transportation alternatives. So looking at um, trails and bikes and off um, non-motorized transportation. Um, it's the early phases of that program. The first deadline is a notice of intent to apply through their portal, that's October 31st. So at this phase, um, where municipalities or any public body needs to submit projects, they'd be interested in being considered and DOT will evaluate the one submitted for eligibility and competitiveness and then reach back out to the public bodies on an invitation to actually apply um, for different programs. And so what we've done and what the Finance Committee reviewed on Monday is a list of projects that are from the current STIP needs list that DOT has identified in the planning and environmental linkages study that DOT did and completed this year, projects from our own CIP, and then other ideas that have come up over time um, and some need has been identified. And so the list is in front of you um, and on the screen for what you know, we can submit as many as we want. There's no obligation at this point. Um, you'll, um, we'll, the next phase, if any would be selected, that's when we start um, needing to revisit what is economically viable as far as a match requirement, um, what has support um, for a project to move forward. But just wanted to put on your radar, you know, the suite of projects that we're submitting, um, the CTP and TA are funded through these increased um, infrastructure dollars that are trickling down to state programs. So this is kind of this first um, effort we're making at some of these infrastructure programs. Um, and we'll keep the assembly updated if any of these are selected by DOT to be invited to uh, go through the formal application process where a schedule scope and estimate would be identified um, and then ranked against other projects in the state. And then we had a great conversation with Talon and Dominic on Monday, just reviewing this and some ideas um, that are now reflected in this version. Um, any questions on any of that? 
um, this CTP or any of the quick other updates I provided. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Loborg. Safe travels. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And um, so thanks for that, Teresa. And I will um, uh, kind of continue on that. We'll call it the Finance Committee report. Um, Teresa hit on the fact that Dominic, uh, Assembly Members Canali and and um, and Shreve met just a couple nights ago, reviewing potential STIP projects and considering our capacity um, to meet match requirements, um, projects that might have that 9.03%. And um, you know, what is our capacity um, currently and with funds that are coming in? So, um, so appreciate the Finance Committee's work on that. And moving into my written report, uh, which is in, in the onboard packet and does get posted online too later, um, it does start off with some good news in terms of revenue coming in. And that's, that's um, what, what is really kind of the last gasp of the big ARPA bill, the American Rescue Plan. It did have uh, a, a component that specifically spoke to public lands and had an allocation of $1.1 billion for public lands counties, which I've been tracking and eagerly awaiting for word of, um, <clears throat> of the allocation of the formula. And I kind of let the assembly know that it could, could affect our treasury. And um, we got news and it's good. It's not exactly as good as it could have been um, in terms of allocation. Um, there were some caps in terms of population that negatively affected our total, but, um, <clears throat> but overall, we're pleased um, that a they got it out the last day of the fe of the federal fiscal year. They announced it, they being U.S. Treasury, and um, so they arrived at the formula based on some input that they got from NACO and the committee I sit on the Public Lands um, Payment Committee, and and you know we're one of many counties in the country that are eligible revenue sharing counties. Um, our number is four seven seven nine hundred. Four hundred seventy-seven thousand nine hundred a year for two years, for these two fiscal years. But because they got the the allocation out so late that it's really the end of the fiscal year, and they're going to open the next fiscal year in January. We're really talking over the course of four months. We'll be um, set to receive uh, nine hundred fifty-five thousand eight hundred. Now these these funds do not um, really have any strings attached. They, they, it's, the program um, guidance is that you can consider these revenue and use them in any way that you can, that you use revenue. Um, it is to replace lost revenue. And, um, and again, it didn't even match that. Um, so I know some folks out there might sound like we're getting a lot in, in the replacement revenue. And to Representative McCabe, I do want to thank the legislature for your work in in um, in directing some of the state's ARPA monies to the counties, to pardon me, the boroughs who who had significant revenue losses, and that that contribution really made the biggest difference here, moved the needle the most. For through that program approved by the legislature, signed by the governor, we were able to recoup 3.8 million, and through this, you know, we're getting about a million. Um, then in the regular ARPA funds, that's where we got hosed, right? I mean, that was where we got just a few, a couple hundred thousand. So we are talking that, you know, altogether we will have received about five, five million in, in lost revenue makeup. But let's also remember that we've lost over seven million. I haven't even done a calculation recently, but a while back I did the calculation. It was mm -hmm. over seven million that we lost. So while this is really helpful and really appreciated, you know, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't even, you know, make us whole much less like some of the other counties out there who just have it kind of sloshing around because they've received so much um, relief. So, um, so that's where we're sitting. We're appreciative and, um, and excited about um, getting this final 
bit of ARPA um, funding. And you know, we, we were one of the first to get in that portal and apply, and it's it's already moving. So I wanted to report that out. Um, now on to some other kind of borough programs, that brush collection program, accepting brush at all three solid waste locations, you know, has really helped a lot of residents firewise their properties. Um, the piles at, at Cantwell and at Healy um, were at capacity prior to the Division of Forestry coming down and helping out and working with the VFDs here to uh, to, to burn those piles. Um, we do have an, a memorandum of agreement with forestry. We, we have an understanding it's kind of, kind of be annual that will um, help with the, this ongoing program. Um, and, and it articulates the goals of the program to reduce fuels in the borough. And, and it does allow for some expenditures and reimbursements through, through forestry for fuel reduction efforts. Clear Fire ongoing recovery efforts. Um, the borough is engaging with FEMA's public assistance program to recoup the 10,000 in, in wave tipping fees at the Denali Borough landfill, but uh, the, for the bigger sum for funding to complete the repair of the road damage, um, the roads that were damaged by the fire suppression efforts in the area. That work was supposed to be done by the fire response teams. Uh, it was left incomplete and um, and the it does meet the public assistance program, and we are planning on working through that very challenging program. The one time we've done it before, we're still working through it. We still haven't received the eighty thousand we put in for it from uh, two years ago. So, um, and actually, I was just looking at some of those things today. But we are moving forward with um, with trying to help. Through that program. And Teresa repeat, reported on the street addressing progress, the field work to gather and record um, street information. And, and also we're developing a business address request form, which will be live in the coming months. Uh, and uh, business will be able to hopefully be issued those street addresses in, in 2023. Um, some work on that that Parks Highway Railroad crossing at, two, at 235, the only one in the borough, and one of the last along the Parks Highway these days. Um, <clears throat> it has been an identified priority of ours for a lot of years to eliminate that. And, um, and the current vision is to eliminate it by, um, by realigning the railroad uh, main line as it was identified in that, in that Pell study. And in that Pell study that looked at transportation priorities in the area, it ranked it really high. It's a high priority project. And, um, and recently I did write a letter to the U.S. Transportation Secretary Buttigieg um, supporting the state of Alaska DOT's application under the Railroad Crossing Elimination Grant Program. So we're hopeful to get some movement on that long-standing need and actually really big project moving a railroad. Um, <clears throat> I want to let you know that AGDC, that's the Alaska Gas Line Development Corporation, that state-owned corporation, they're planning to hold an informative public meeting and project update um, here in Healy at, at the Tri-Valley Community Center. It's scheduled for Wednesday, October 26th, with a time to be determined. And the borough has submitted a grant application for the Community Wildfire Defense Grant. Um, <clears throat> there, there's a lot of uh, initiative and resources going into wildland fire prevention and mitigation efforts. Um, and to take advantage of those, you need a plan. And um, so with the goal of developing a borough-wide CWPP, Community Wildland Protection Plan, um, we did ask under this, the defense grant for $96,000. And, um, and we are, you know, with a, with a idea of developing a strong plan with local input, Take some time. It's going to take some time to go around, engage, of course, the fire departments, engage residents, and come up with a strong plan um, and capture some of those CWD, CWPP monies and get some good mitigation projects going here. We know we've got some, some real hazards, especially with the spruce bark beetle kill that we're seeing. Um, at the last assembly meeting, we the assembly uh, did discuss... Excessive highway noise due to compression brake systems, Jake brakes, 
And I did a little research on that, just wanted to bring some of that back. I did share with a couple of the assembly members who, who expressed interest, um, the industry information and not a knowledgeable re local resident all said that properly muffled systems are not the issue. Um, <clears throat> that uh, non-enforcement of straight pipe or, or non-muffled systems is the issue. And as a borough, I don't see how we get our arms around that. I mean, that's almost more of a state regulation kind of um, thing than, and the only municipality I found in Alaska, which does regulate Jake breaks within their municipality is, is kind of the rather compact city of Soldotna at the bottom of that big hill. So, um, so I wanted to share that information and, um, <clears throat> And also wanted to let you know about that AML, that's the Alaska Municipal League um, annual conference in December. It's December 7th to the 9th down in Anchorage at the Denina Center. And also just to maybe put that on your calendar radar, but also please do consider that really valuable training called newly elected officials training. Um, and you don't have to be a newly elected official to gain um, from that training. I, I've participated in a couple of different times and I was on the assembly for many years before I went to my first and got a lot out of it each time. Really good, valuable training. That's on November 30th. And to register or um, or approve any travel to attend, um, do contact the borough office. And finally, I want to tell you a little bit about some work um, on with MTA on a broadband grant application that could serve the southern part of the borough. They've been um, working on an application under the reconnect Four program, you know, they're, they're looking to hit unserved and underserved areas. Um, they've got a, a project area from Colorado Lakes at milepost 187 up to milepost 235. And it does include 365 different service locations, um, all of them either unserved or underserved. And, um, and the grant application does include a requirement to receive consent from any tribal areas to be served. And, and so been working with the native village of Cantwell and, and with Otna Incorporated, and we're gonna to continue to engage and encourage um, favorable consideration of that um, grant application. You know, if, if, if it does go in, it's just an application. Like we've, we've been through this before, we, we weren't successful in a previous application, but it really is important to address our collective, you know, lack of digital equity. You know, in, in some of my communications, I was defining digital equity, and um, and that's what these these federal funds are intended to to help support and to to raise us up in digital equity and uplift our communities. So um so looking forward to a positive um, outcome there. Is and the same same program, different program. different different program, different okay. different agency actually altogether. Um, <clears throat> The one the when we partnered with MTA on a different scope project, um, that was through NTIA, and that's the National Telecommunications Infrastructure, I think, agency. And um, <clears throat> and this is through USDA, so it has different requirements. Um, you know, uh, tribal consent was not part of that other um project, and so this is the first time that they're considering that and they're working through their process. Um, Question from Mr. Canelli. Mr. Yeah, just a, yeah, just a quick follow-up. Uh, so the uh, deadline that was uh, yesterday at 4 p.m., is that still fluid as this other consent issue is being considered? There's more time allowed for that? Yeah, thanks for that, Mr. Canale. There was some urgency, as I understood that there was um, the the deadline of yesterday. Um, from MTA, they're saying that that was kind of an, an internal deadline that they can work with. Um, and, you know, the application is due um, beginning of November, but at the same time, MTA needs time to prep prep everything properly for their board meeting that does need board approval and that's coming right. up. So, um, <clears throat> so they, they've extended it a little bit and, right. and we're Perfect. working on it. 
and then we're hopeful at this point. Um, so, um, so I also wanted to report on the planning commission. We didn't have a planning commission report listed there and they have um, at their September meeting, they had kind of a walking tour of a couple areas. They looked at the lignite area, that's borough MLE land, municipal entitlement land, and in consideration of where might an appropriate place be for the Denali borough to utilize its, its MLE lands for one of the purposes is to support the continued development of our community. And we do have a housing need here and um, it's growing as it is throughout the state. And so that lignite area with good road access, with good power access. And as we walked around, we saw some pretty well-drained um, land and, um, and, and some pretty, pretty, pretty good land there. Um, so the Planning Commission also visited a dry, dry creek site. They were looking at access issues there. Um, that was the September meeting. Their agenda for the October meeting next week definitely includes continued work on um, a possible development of a subdivision um, and, you know, just looking at the lignite area map, just looking at the Pangini lignite management plan, those types of things, those early steps. And um, their, their agenda also includes um, the street naming change since we moved forward and named all the streets in the borough. That was quite an effort. Now we have a process for people to change them if, if they, you know, so choose and follow the process. And, and um, one road down in the Rock Creek area um, is proposed to be changed. Um, a permit for that um, archaeology excavation that's been permitted for years up in the Little Panguini. That's coming to the Planning Commission. And um, and those are some things they've got on their agenda, including revisiting the Dry Creek um, access resolution from last year. And that's, I think, concludes my report. Thank you. And I'll be happy to have, take any questions you might have. Anything from Mayor Walker? Thanks, thanks for the report. Well, bring us to uh, <clears throat> assembly comments, and I'll start up with uh, Mr. Canali and C. Day. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer Zimmerman. Um, yeah, thanks for the reports uh, to uh, Sergeant Miner for reporting on uh, law enforcement activity issues uh, borough wide. I think it would be great to to hear from. Uh, uh, state troopers on at least a quarterly basis. I don't know how we want to memorialize that, but I would certainly support something along those lines. Um, also, thank you, uh, Teresa Fulberg, for your report. Um, Superintendent Polta for yours and Mayor Walker for your report. As always, detail is greatly appreciated. And thank you, Representative McCabe, uh, for attending tonight's meeting and speaking to the assembly. I see Senator Shower who has also joined the meeting. So thank you for uh, participating, Senator Shower. And certainly I'll yield any of my time for uh, the Senator to make any comments as well, if that's appropriate at this time. Good evening, everybody. Uh, appreciate you guys letting me join. Sorry, it's a little late. <clears throat> it's that time of year, as I'm sure some of you have run before know, I'm on my fourth event in about four hours so and i'm sitting outside another community council i'm going to run into once we're done here but um appreciate your patience i know kevin i've been staying in touch with him while this was happening just via text so i kind of had a feel for what was happening and uh, quite frankly really at this point it's learning and listening to what the concerns are and where if uh, i'm reelected as well as kevin where we need to focus because i listen to some of the conversation on the funds i know roads are a big deal I've launched myself a few times off that railroad crossing, so I know all too well what you're talking about. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's a, a, a jump jet taking off a British carrier and a Harrier, getting airborne there a few times, didn't slow down soon enough, go, oops, sorry, to my wife. So, um, But I know roads are a big deal. I know we're seeing some uh, issue in crime. Law enforcement's big. The firefighting part of that you talked about is a big deal because, of course, in my district a couple of years ago, you remember in Willow, you know, half the town was just wiped out by that fast-moving storm. Um, that windstorm and what happened. So 
having DNR cooperate and make sure that we are clearing, including allowing, um, you know, some of the folks that I know, like from Papoose Milling down here and others that want to use that wood uh, and can do a win-win for us is a big deal as well. So I, I'm just saying some of the things I'm hearing because I know these are big issues for you. So um, what I just hope that you guys will continue to do as we go into session and Kevin and I will certainly ask you for the ones headed back is what do you guys need? What are the priorities for spending? You know, cause we have limited funds. You guys are all aware of that, but there is the IGEM money coming in. And um, I know that we were very key on the capital budget. Kevin, I know voted for it in the house uh, myself, Donnie Olson, Sarah Rasmussen. We were the three that added that half a billion dollars to the infrastructure budget, because we know we're a decade behind and we are behind in roads, bridges, ports, airports, and we just can't afford to do that. You get too far behind, we have crumbling infrastructure, and that's not that's not something we can afford to do. That that hurts us. So um, we have some money available right now, and then with the federal money coming in, and I heard you guys talking on the backside is a big deal that we focus it in the right place and uh, we try to get caught up best we can, and other places get ahead. So um, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to sit here and yap a bunch because I'm still learning this part of the district. It's new, um, but that is what we are here to do: is listen and find out where we can prioritize these things and get it right and hopefully help you guys. So just, I look forward to staying in touch with you. Let us know what you need so that we can focus. And that's the important part of our job. I see it, but making sure we stay in touch with you. So uh, it's good to hear from you guys. And uh, thanks for letting me speak. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Any, any questions for, for Mr. Schauer? Okay. We'll continue on with the assembly comments and, and move on to, uh, Mr. Alexander. I'm going to say thanks for the reports. They're uh, thorough and very informative. Um, I'll save the rest of my comments for the end. And Mr. Shreve. I'll save my comments for the end. Mr. Chapfield. I too will save my comments for later portions. Okay. And uh, I, I'd just like to extend my uh, congratulations to uh, Taylor Eddington um, and uh, great race coming home with the, with a big medal for the for, for Tri Valley School. And uh, also congratulations to the Tri Valley soccer team. Um, had a great showing at the at the state tournament, and uh, it was awesome to uh, hear that uh, they got on uh, in their in their winning ways. Um, so congratulations to, to everybody that participated there. And Mr. Stinger. Yeah, um, just like to say thanks to uh, Superintendent Polta, excellent report again, Trooper Miner for stepping in. I do support the uh, quarterly visits. I think that it'd be nice. And I'm, I'm really happy to hear that they're focusing on the burglaries and the break-ins. That, that is a big issue in our community. Um, congrats to Taylor Eddington, of course, representing. That's awesome. Good job. And to the Mudges, Candace and Darren, fantastic folks. Um, really good news on the ARPA funds. That's way cool. And uh, thanks to uh, Senator Shower and uh, Representative McCabe. Appreciate you stopping by. That's it. It takes us to a communication and appearance request. And we have um, uh, a letter from our uh, auditors, uh, the 2022 annual financial statement uh, engagement letter. Um, so make sure you take time to read that and um, kind of their presentation of the work they're gonna engage in as we close out this fiscal, fiscal year. Make sure all of our books are in order. And brings us to ordinances. And we have three draft ordinances on tonight's agenda. And the first one up is the Homeland Security Grant acceptance and allocation. I would entertain a motion to introduce. I move to introduce uh, ordinance 22-11, Homeland Security Grant acceptance and allocation. I'll second. Moved by Mr. Chatfield to introduce, and it's been seconded. Uh, Mayor Walker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. Zimmerman, we um, 
have participated in this program for a lot of years and, and secured a lot of important equipment um, for emergency response and Homeland Security um, for our different departments. And the process is to engage the departments and ask what are their needs each year. And um, this year it was radios, the mobile radios from within the mobile equipment, right? And, um, <clears throat> and it did come to uh, $54,000. And we also were hopeful and put in for kind of a big request this year, north of 100,000, where we've also put in nearly $46,000 request to uh, purchase street signs and addressing the sign equipment um, to fund the installation of street signs, which will greatly aid emergency response here. And uh, we're very pleased that both requests, the, the full ask, um, was, uh, was offered this year. So, so fantastic news. And, um, and I encourage your favorable consideration. Any discussion on the introduction of Ordinance 22-11? Uh, Mr. Alexander. So this is a, a grant with no um, contribution from the borough? True, yeah. A lot of the other grants uh, that we're talking about these days have those matches 20% or 9%. Yeah, this, this longstanding program has always been, um, uh, you know, 100%. Grant Good. Pro. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll just mention that, you know, combined with the, the USDA small business grant that we got for street sign installation that totals, um, well, 114, you know, we're up to about 160 we've got for that big project. So we're feeling good about it. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> I would ask for a roll call vote on introduction, please. Joe Chatfield? Yes. Dominic Canale? Yes. David Alexander? Yes. Jeff Stanger? Yes. Callum Shreve? Yes. Jared Zimmerman? Yes. It's introduced. Is there a motion to postpone to the next meeting? I move to postpone to the next meeting. Second. Moved by Mr. Chatfield to postpone and it's been seconded. Any discussion on postponing? Anyone opposed to postponing? All right, hearing none, we will see that at our next move and move on to uh, draft ordinance 22-12 an ordinance appropriating up to $65,000 from the capital improvement project fund for design work for two identified capital improvement projects. Outdoor recreation and parking improvement at Tri Valley School and covered cold storage at the Denali Borough Landfill. I'll make a motion to uh, introduce Second. Ordinance 2212. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Stinger to introduce Ordinance 22 12 and seconded. Mayor Walker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Zimmerman. So, I, mean, I can't quite spit that out this evening. It's a big name today. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Um, so this, this ordinance um, takes the next step in our capital improvement program, wherein in the spring we approved that ordinance, identifying those, those capital projects. And, and we did say that this year we would, we would commit to the design funds out of our capital improvement fund, right? And so the sums are just the same sums that were identified in the, 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 the CIP list, the capital improvement program. And, um, and we're excited to get moving on these, these projects. The, um, they're both really needed as cold storage, but also really recycling at the Denali Borough landfill. For that's a lot of the things that we store and handle and, and move through are items that are going to be recycled. And sometimes that's drums of oil-based paint and you know, other, other liquids there to be managed in a, in a uh, covered environment um, would be best. And um, so we've got um, 
of the breakout of those, you know, there's 25,000 to design and get going on that project and 40,000 for the um, parking and outdoor recreation improvements on the north side of Tri-Valley School. And the idea there is to come at um, a design concept and that will take some collective work and effort and, and thinking between the school district and we'll bring it to the assembly. You know, what it, it's an idea right now, but let's bring it to that conceptual design level of what, what we want that area to be and what improvements we foresee. We know there's been a lot of interest and requests for, for in, instance, a track around the soccer field, you know, on a could a conceptual design you know, draw that in and what could we be looking at um, for a concept there. And, you know, we could take that and also look for funding, um, you know, with that conceptual design in hand. So, yeah. so that's the first step on that project. Great. Yeah, discussion on Ordinance 22-11. 12. 12. Thank you. Yeah, I like uh, I'm, I like the idea. Um, starting that that conversation, coming up with a scope and um, public engagement on mm -hmm. that, uh, <coughs> really, really really fun. So, hasn't been a lot of recent update upgrades to the to the facility there, but um, I know I'll be benefiting from it for for a long time if anything comes of it. Um, do you know uh, if we you know spend sixty five thousand dollars on this? Um, will those funds be it will be put towards a, a future match or something. If we have a grant, does that just depend on the, the grants that we get? So if you could could put some of that towards something. Good question that would relate to the parameters of the grant. Mm -hmm. It's possible. It's possible. Grants allow it, some don't. Mm -hmm. I like the idea though. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, I think money money well spent to you can come up with a good plan. Yeah. Okay, um, any other discussion on Ordinance 22-12? If not, I ask for a, a roll call vote on introduction. Joe Stinger? Yes. Dominic Canale? Yes. Alan Shreve? Yes. David Alexander? Yes. Joe Chatfield? Yes. Jared Zimmerman? Yes. It's introduced. Is there a motion to postpone to the next meeting? I move to postpone. And I'll second. Yeah. Moved by Mr. Chatfield to postpone. Any discussion on postponing? Anyone opposed to postponing? Okay. Hearing none, well, that will be postponed and bring us to Ordinance 22-13, which is an ordinance to amend the title of Denali Borough Code 9.15. Mayor Walker. <clears throat> Thank you. This short and simple ordinance is the definition of code cleaning, meaning when you come across something in the code that just isn't as intended and um, let's fix that. And that is the title of 915 uh, is currently zoning local option within that chapter um, you find our definition of what the borough zone, which is general use, um, which includes pretty much every type of use except for a small, a handful of impactful developments that would be um, permitted under the conditional use permit system. That permit system is under this chapter. And you find local, you find um, local option under this chapter too, but you find all that under this chapter. So if you're looking for the conditional use, as I was, <laughs> and, and I said, oh, I have to look at the whole option chapter. That doesn't seem right. So um, let's fix that. Let's, um, let's call it broader, more encompassing as it is, simple term zoning, and you'll find the different categories under there. I'll make a motion to introduce the ordinance 2213. Right? Second. Mm -hmm. 
Any discussion of Ordinance 22-13? Uh, a roll call vote on introduction. Uh, David Alexander. Yes. Jeff Stanger. Yes. Helen Reed. Yes. Dominic Canali. Yes. Joe Chatfield. Yes. David Zimmerman. Yes. It's introduced. Okay. Postpone. Motion to postpone. Let's move, postpone, second. All right, it's been moved by Mr. Stanger to postpone. It's been seconded. Anyone opposed to postponing? Okay, we will see that on our next public hearing agenda. No pending ordinances, no resolutions. Public comments. I don't see anybody else having joined the call. No. Phone's ringing off the hook. No. Okay. Close public comment. Uh, go back to uh, assembly comments. Mr. Stanger. Um, not much to say. It was a good meeting again. I learned something every time I'm here. Really appreciate the reports from uh, the new mayor and uh, that's all we got. It's a good, good time. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, thanks to all the staff for all your work. Um, for uh, Representative McCabe and, and Senator Shower, I would put a, a little shout out to uh, Mayor Walker had a, a little YouTube thing uh, he was doing with Mondays uh, with the mayor. But um, there's, there's a few of those that describe some of the unique um, aspects of Denali Borough and Denali Borough government that um, uh, I think would be of interest to, to anybody, you know, that's going to be representing us uh, down in Juneau. So um, if you have a have, have a chance um, for uh, for a short, entertaining video, uh, a little bit of Denali Borough history and, and stuff, it's it's uh, it's worth a listen. Thanks. I appreciate that. I, I'm sure that if uh, Mayor Walker put it out, that it's definitely entertaining. <laughs> 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 I'll second that one. <laughs> okay. uh, Mr. Chaffield. Well, uh, I don't think I'm going to be too long winded tonight. I'm extremely tired, uh, but I just want to say uh, thank you for Sergeant Minor for, for his, uh, his input uh, for his report. And I'm really pleased that we're working together with, with uh, AST. Uh, to to put a put the damper on on the crime wave that we've been having here. We here in Denali Borough uh, are kind of used to not having much, if any, crime, and so so this is this is very welcome, and and the, the crime is not welcome. Right. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Representative McCabe and uh, Senator Showers, and. And appreciate you uh, taking an interest in our in our borough and our communities here. And I think as you uh, explore some of those videos, you're going to find we're a very unique borough, a uh, very unique uh, county for that matter. Anywhere in this country, there's no other place like us. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for, for attending. And I want to say thanks to everybody else who's listening in and you might view this later uh appreciate your participation that's all mr shrink yeah i'd just like to thank everybody for coming and for the reports that we had um and for tracy ploberg putting together that cip list it was good to talk about it with uh, dominic and the mayor on monday um, about some of the opportunities that we will have in the near future to be able to uh, expand some of our pathways and different things as we are able to uh, afford them and just to see the progress that we have going on with that. Um, and then thank you, Representative McCabe and Senator Showers for showing up and uh, taking interest in the community. Mr. Alexander. 
We'll uh, keep it short and sweet since I think we're going for the record for shortest meeting, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Great meeting and uh, have a good night. <laughs> Mr. Canelli. All right, thank you. Um, again, thank you, Representative McCabe, uh, Senator Shower, for joining us tonight and uh, speaking to us. And I wanted to thank Mark Johnson, although he couldn't join us tonight, for filling in seat uh, I um, for the late Eileen Holmes. I know there's an election uh, coming up next month. And uh, as my final comment, I just encourage everybody to uh, get out and vote. Um, every, every vote counts. So November 8th, make sure you Show up at the polls to vote. That's all for me. Okay. Our next meeting will be Wednesday. Oh. Can I, can I just throw something out there? Yep. Um, so um, this election cycle is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. Normally we have the election. Then a week or so later, we have the meeting where we can certify and seat those new um, assembly members that are elected. This one's different. We're going to have a crazy week that week. We're going to do... Um, Elections on Tuesday, we have the assembly meeting the next day in Anderson. Um, and then Thursday, we're gonna have the vaccine clinic, which yes, all of us, well, all of our staff volunteer for. <laughs> and, and then we will have the canvas meeting that Friday. So it's gonna be a little bit different where the elected assembly members from the November uh, 8th election won't actually be seated till the December meeting um, when you certify. So a little different, a little nuanced, and um, I'll be sure to let Mark Johnson know that we do hope he'll attend <laughs> one more month. Oh, good. Good, good. Yeah. Um, do we, would it, would it be smart to postpone our assembly meeting for a week or? Um, no, not necessarily the next week. Um, we do have a planning commission meeting. They are working through quite a few things. And then the week after, we're going to bump up into uh, Thanksgiving holiday. So, yeah. so I think we'll um, power through. Okay. Energy and drinks would be appreciated. And okay. we're going to do great. Hot, hot coffee and Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we will see this group up in Anderson at City Hall. City Hall. Um, at 6 p.m. Wednesday, November 9th. And I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. We do adjourn. Second it. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Representative. Thanks.